talk to you in two years, so, you know, uh -huh. this, this here's our audition, okay? <laughs> All right, so, you know, welcome, uh, Jeff, welcome everybody to uh, my podcast here, Jeff Crow. you know me. I got Rod Johnson here. Now, Rod Johnson has a very interesting story to tell about a whole lot of different topics. Start off, where'd you, where'd you get your start at? Uh, where were you born and raised? First of all, you know, I was born right here in Fresno, California in 1967. In 67, I mean in 69, we left, we left Fresno and moved to Los Angeles. All right. So I grew up in Los Angeles from 69 until 2014 when I moved back to Fresno. What was L.A. Back, like back then? What was the atmosphere in the air? Well, as a kid or a teenager, what, what kind of part of my life? You know, when I was a kid, you know, when I played Pop Warner football, I was the best on the field. So I grew, I learned to um, have responsibility. Now, going to my teenage years, I started gang banging. You know, I used to be too from a How do you transition from being the good kid, so to speak, to becoming a full-fledged main member Neighborhood of, destroyer. Uh, of your set? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was a good kid. I was a good kid, you know, but just put like this, growing up in L.A., you know, in the eighties, when the crack, when the crack epidemic came oh, around, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, when the crack epidemic came around, man, we felt everybody was doing it. You know, man, you yeah. go to school, man. When I'm you figure out uh, if everybody's doing it, I better get in too, right? <laughs> no, I just like I say, um, I tell everybody the story, man. The movie Scarface messed me up, man. I saw the movie ah, interesting, face. interesting. I like that. I saw the movie Scarface, and I'm like, wow, man, this is really the American dream. Like I said, I was a good <laughs> I was Except a good for the ending, that's yeah. not a, that's that's part was not a good dream for Scarface. I was a, I was a, um, <laughs> Don't say hello to your little friend, please. <laughs> <laughs> say hello to my little friend. Eh? Uh, no. right. you know, I wanted to survive. You know, like I said, I survived. Tony Montana, he didn't survive no game. I mean, um, you know, by the way, a little side note: Pacino did a heck of a job being an Italian American actor playing mm -hmm. a Cuban drug dealer. No, I love Al Pacino. That's one of yeah. my favorite actors right there. Yeah, yeah. he could play a mob guy, you know, from Sicily. He could play a Cuban guy. In Donnie Brasco, remember he was Ruggiero's character where he was just a low-level dude that was constantly answering up the ladder and always begging for change. So, wide range there. So, basically, Ma Tony Montagna, you know, got you uh, got you going. So, so where do you go with it from there? <laughs> I like the movie. I watched the movies a bunch of times, man. And like I say, it was a whole different. The '80s from the crack era was a whole different era, man. It, it'll never be ever like that again, ever. You know, you like I say, I was 17, 18 years old, man, making two or three thousand dollars a day. They cannot do that today, man. Like I said, a lot, a lot of too, too much, too many, too many guys in the in the business, and also meth uh, overtook the. Uh, the crack game, <laughs> just in case any law All enforcement you know, officers are out. Uh, I don't know nothing about the math. Well, like, just in case any law officers are out there, for those of you who think you won the war on drugs against crack, no, what happened was crack addicts started switching to meth and other drugs. So they just substituted out and you started seeing practice. It's all about, the, it's the government, the government behind everything. Ah, you, there you go, exactly. You know what? I've heard a lot about that. Expand on that for us. You know, when I say the government is behind everything, man, I can only speak about, you know, the crack era. They're know, behind it and they're in front of it, too, by the way. And all that stuff, <laughs> man, you know, he's selling all this drugs, making this money, but, you know, it's, it's for a bigger cause. You know, like I say, the government well, behind it. Well, you know, yeah, plane, yeah, you yeah. see the brother, a Latino, a, a, anybody with a plan, you sign the government to bring that stuff over with. We don't know how to turn the plant into the paste, the paste into the pot. We don't know how to do that. So the government has something to do with Who's that. Who's weak? African Americans, Latinos, you know, people who oh, minorities have figured it out. It's coming from Colombia <laughs> <laughs> across the border. Cut, 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 cut. <laughs> no, dude, that's part of what's good with a podcast, dude. That kind of stuff. It sounds, it's natural. Cut, See, man, cut, cut. How you cut? Okay, I'm 